Hey guys, so we're back with another background episode and this one is going to be kind of a limestone sort of marbled stone background and I'm going to be using this for my Lion King piece with Simba and Scar. So the reason I chose the limestone is because I want something that's going to have a neutral color uh, kind of feel to it that I can later, if I decide that I really want the background to incorporate in with the piece, that I can then uh, do maybe some special effects with so I can make it look like it was carved or I could do painting on it. And uh, the limestone is, well, it's a, a real neutral material. <clears throat> it's used a lot in um, building construction and walls and such. And uh, if you haven't um, really looked into for your own purposes, uh, faux finishes. Um, maybe you're not one of those DIY kind of people. Uh, it, it does pay as an artist to kind of take the time to look in on how to do stone finishes and faux finishes and be able to incorporate that as an element to your painting. Bringing in some architectural material such as stone or marble or granite that's something that you can bring in as another element rather than just having like a plain uh, gradient background or just a plain solid colored background. So without further ado, we're going to get into this and I hope you enjoy. Okay guys, so the first step in creating these faux backgrounds is to get a good solid base color. Now this creamy yellow color is actually created by mixing the raw sienna, yellow oxide, and a master's touch uh, color called Milky White. That's a Hobby Lobby brand. Uh, if you're looking for the Liquitex color, it would equate to the non-bleached white. Now what I'm looking for is to get this paint into every pore of the canvas that I actually need coverage on. I don't want to have exposed gesso and I need a good, solid, even base coat. Little dog hair there. Now the first tool I'm going to use when I go for the effects is I'm going to pull out an awful lot of those faux finish tools. And the first one's actually going to be a sponge. Now the sponge is actually supposed to be used for doing walls. So I'm going to get a lot of fast and huge coverage with the sponge. If you're using a smaller painting, you'd have to go with a smaller sponge. Uh, but you could typically find these in uh, both ho like Home Depot kind of areas. You can find them at Hobby Lobby, craft stores, and you can even find them at Walmart. And you want to really make sure that you're changing how you're holding your, your sponge and the directionality of it. Otherwise, you can wind up getting a lot of repeated patterns. The first layer is a mix of the milky white and the raw umber. The second layer is going to be just the straight raw umber. And what I need to do is create different uh, textures and colors in order to get depth to the stone that I'm doing. Now I am working with this color wet on wet, which is going to help to blend in some of these colors and not leave hard edges. Right now I don't really want a lot of hard edges in the stonework. That's going to come later. What we need is a lot of variety of tonal tech colors and shapes to carry your eye through the painting. Now I'm going through and I'm drying the first layer to make sure that we've at least got this kind of uh, first layer established. Now I'm taking that raw sienna yellow oxide uh, and the milky white and mixing with a little bit of ultramarine blue. We're going to add a little bit of coolness to this, which is going to add some depth to it. It's actually going to make it look as though it's a little translucent, even though this paint is actually not translucent at all. None of the colors that I'm using right now have uh, a very good translucent quality. Again, working with these colors wet on wet and so that they blend together to be a cohesive single slab of color or colors. Yeah, there's a lot of colors in here, so we'll say colors rather than color. And really just jumping around with the different colors uh, so I can get some foreground and background with this uh, element. Uh, my color palette is the raw umber, burnt umber, ultramarine blue, that milky white or non-bleached white, 
raw sienna and yellow oxide. I'm not using a pure titanium white. I want to leave that for the massive pop that I'm going to need in my lines later. Starting out the new layer with a dry layer. This is another uh, faux finish tool. Basically, it's like a very shag corner tool. Gives me some really good texture. And then I'm just going to kind of blend that texture out with this little itty bitty three inch roller. I want it to kind of blend out. We're going to give another layer of impurity to our stone. But notice how much that adds uh, interest to the background without becoming a whole separate piece. More layers with the sponge. And I'm really going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth until I wind up with a happy medium. So that's the similar stone that I want to go with. I did want to go with something a little bit cooler, uh, but I do want to make note of the, the large amount of contrast in that slab of faux stone. So that's kind of the thing I want to make sure that I incorporate into the stone so it doesn't just look like I sponge painted this silly thing. Uh, in order to create some of these uh, impurities and layers to this piece of limestone, sandstone, whatever you want to consider it to be. What I need to do is take this one inch brush and I need to pre-moisten the bristles. I need those bristles to be able to take in the pigment without having pigment of their own. So you wet them down and then wring out the brush so that they're moist but not dripping wet. And then you need to take whatever pigment you're doing, using, in this case I'm using a very light pigment to create highlights, and just go through and drag it through the paint just in one end of the brush, not both ends. You don't want a good coverage. You just want one end of the brush. And then you're gonna use it to create a highlight wherever you would see a highlight naturally created in your stone. Now I have to be careful so that I'm not creating a singular grain direction with the stone. One of the things I like about this kind of sandstone, limestone effect is that there is no one directionality. And by not having a directionality, it keeps your eye kind of stagnant and wandering around the piece and takes the focus off the background and puts back on your subject. Another layer, we're gonna go in with some low lights, kind of shadows. So think of kind of like ladies, if you're highlighting your hair, we got the highlights in. Now we're gonna go with a little bit of low lights. So we're going in with that ultramarine blue and some burnt umber. This is gonna give us a really dark, cool low light and really push forward those highlights that we just put in. Just going to add in a little bit underneath like the arms of these lions. I don't want to go too far into that because honestly what I can do is actually detract it and I haven't even established uh, what I'm going to do with those lions so I need to get back and focus back in on that background. The subtlety of using stone without any single directionality. Marble has one single direction as a tendency of liking to go toward. Lends itself for your eye to be naturally wandering around the piece and makes your focus be on whatever your subject is. Now the nice thing about this is that with this variegant kind of stone texture I can go through later. I can make it look carved. I can make it look painted. I can add more texture to it by adding more highlights and lowlights and contrast. Or I can just leave it the way it is and then just put shadows underneath my lines. This is a nice variegated way to give me a good solid background with a believable substance that will not take away from the subjects of the painting. I hope you found this interesting and I hope you found it useful. Thanks a lot for watching.